A one and a two and a chick a boom a chick. So, if you've listened to the last two Remodelers on the Rise Ed episodes, we had a one titled Hodgepodge, and then another that was a trip through Kyle's inbox. And along a similar vein, we are just going to hop over to my Evernote, which is how I keep all of my to-do lists and notes and everything organized. And I have an Evernote that is titled Read This. It's all in caps. And what it is is a series of quotes, of thoughts, of reminders for me. Um, It's letting you in a little bit of insight into who I am, but I'm doing it from a standpoint of, I think it might be helpful for you to hear some of this. Um, As business owners, there is a never ending list of to do's. As business owners, business people, let me just change that to just workers. I don't know who's listening to this. Is not, you guys aren't all remodeling business owners. Um, It can be stressful. And there's days where you need to be reminded of things that have helped you in the past, that impact you. And what I've really done is just collected, there's several, eh, there's 30, 40 of them on here, of just reminders that when I'm feeling overwhelmed or not sure what to work on next or just kind of stuck or need to be inspired, I can click on this Evernote and start reading it. And it generally pretty quickly changes my mindset into something that is much more effective and helpful and productive. So let me read through a few of these and give you some of the insights. All right. So the first thing on this read this Evernote says this, slow down one at a time, stop thinking and work. And it's all in caps. That's all in caps too. I find that when I actually slow down, I get more done. When I just do one thing at a time and get in my head, what is the specific thing I'm going to work on next? And I have that singularly in my mind that I get more done. And I am one that I think this is kind of an entrepreneurial thing slash do I have ADD? I don't know. Um, stop thinking, stop brainstorming, stop dreaming, stop thinking about what your whatever is on your mind and just work. Sometimes you got to put in the work, slow down one thing at a time, stop thinking and work. Next thing on this thing says delegate. What can you delegate? And this is just a reminder for me to just think through What am I looking at on my desk? What am I looking at in my inbox? What am I looking at my to-do list that I can delegate? I think this is something we always have to be evaluating, always have to be thinking about and realize that training somebody on our team, training a virtual assistant, training our bookkeeper to do certain tasks is how we're able to work on more valuable work. You may have heard me talk about before, there's $10 an hour work, $100 $100 an hour work and $1,000 an hour work. As a business owner, if you are stuck in the majority of your time working doing $10 an hour work, low priority, low value work instead of $1,000 an hour work, um, you need to figure out how to delegate out that $10 an hour work so you have more time. As examples, 10 hour work might be depositing money in the bank, entering transactions into QuickBooks, taking out the trash, fill, you know, fill in the blank there. $1,000 work is when you are marketing your business, when you are out in front of a new prospect, building relationship, building no like, and trust, when you are working on your business and analyzing your financials. That's the most valuable work that you can do as a business owner. So this delegate, what can you delegate is a reminder to me of always evaluate what can I send off to somebody on my team so that I can be focused on more valuable work. I'm glad I'm reading through this uh, kind of with you. I haven't clicked on it in hmm, a few months, really. Um, this next one says, use Inbox Pause Heavy. There is a little app in Gmail called Inbox Pause. If you search Inbox Pause Gmail, you'll find it. And when you click that, it basically doesn't allow any new emails to enter your inbox. You can still use your inbox. You can still reply and send things, but you don't get anything new. And I wrote it in my reminders list and my read this Evernote list that I'm going through with you because when I do use that, boy, am I more productive. Boy, am I more efficient. It reminds me of how 
often I get distracted by new emails that pop in and I'm sure you're the same way. Um, next thing on here, it says eat well. I had this thought over the last month or two, am I eating because I really like how that tastes or am I eating based on wanting my body to feel good? When I eat well, when I bring a salad for lunch, when I don't stuff my face with a pumpkin chocolate chip muffin for breakfast, I just feel better. I have more energy. And this is a reminder to me of eating well helps me be, I don't know, it just helps my day go better. So that's a reminder there. Um, this kind of tosses over into the personal side. It says, do something fun with each of the kids. We have four kids, boy, girl, boy, girl, Thomas, Piper, Calvin, and Annie, ranging in age from newly minted teenager down to six years old. And this is a reminder to me of just doing something fun with each of the kids. And the other thing that it says next to this is don't raise your voice. Is anybody guilty? Am I the only father that raises their voice? That's my bad. But this is a reminder to me of trying every day to just do something fun with each of the kids. It might mean just dancing with my little six-year-old for like literally 30 seconds what can make her day. It means I go up and give my awkwardly tall, awkward teenager a hug and say, how you doing, buddy? Right? Trying just to spend a little bit of special time with each one of them every day. And this reminder of just don't raise your voice. Sometimes for me, there's a couple of things I've done. I'm just sharing this because it might be helpful. I literally talk in a higher tone, a higher pitched voice sometimes when I'm angry. Thomas, please don't do that because it's hard to yell when you're talking at your upper register. There's a tip. And, and then also just not raising the voice. Um, it's important to make sure we're not, as the Bible says, exacerbating um, our children. Um, and then I also have on here a quick workout and devotional. Um, I have this phrase that's also in here that says, don't break the chain. Um, when I'm in a good groove, I'm doing a hundred sit-ups a day. And I had a chain earlier in the year of like 40, 50 days where I didn't break the chain, kind of falling off that um, for a while. I did a hundred for the first time in about a month this morning, actually. So I have a one day chain, actually about a 12 hour chain going right now. Um, but this just reminds me a quick workout and a quick devotional. Um, when I crack open my Bible and I read a couple chapters and I spend a little time in prayer, it, um, makes my mind right, sets my heart and mind on the right path for the day. When I skip that because I think, oh, I don't have time for that, I got too much work to do, um, I'm really undercutting my day. So um, that is inbox pause, eat well, something fun with the kids, quick workout, devotional, as a little bit of a plethora of different ideas that are in here as reminders. I'm going to read a few more of them to you, and I hope that a couple of these are maybe good reminders or helping or encouraging you. This one I wrote where I was, uh, the title says, Ideal Workday, colon. Um, and I listed out kind of what my ideal workday looked like. Were you focused on, these are questions, were you focused on the most important work? Often I can be busy and I can be frankly productive, um, but I'm not working on the most important work. Maybe I just sat in my inbox and cranked out emails, but I avoided the most important work that I needed to focus on. So my ideal work day is I'm focused on my most important work, not the newest thing in my inbox or that text or the call. Um, did you impact your clients? When I reflect back on the coaching calls I had that day, did I truly make an impact and help them? Did I deliver value? This is something you should be kind of thinking about and asking in your business. Did I truly deliver value today? That would be an ideal work day. Um, have I worked on improving a process um, or some type of part of my marketing today? So a little bit of on the business time. Did I delegate something? We covered that a little bit earlier in this recording. Um, did I feel prepared? Was I, did I 5P, proper preparation prevents poor performance? Um, did I actually prepare for my meetings well? Um, and then I put as kind of a bonus thing when it comes to an ideal work day, did I sell something? That's always good. That keeps the train a moving in the business. If so, if those things, that's a great day. And I think having a little bit of a idea of what makes up an ideal workday for you, what you heard there was on the business, in the business, 
little bit of marketing, a little bit of sales, a little bit of delivering value, and just really getting a good understanding of what makes an ideal work day, um, I think is a helpful thing. It's been a helpful thing for me to evaluate and think about. All right. And then I'll read a bunch of these without too much uh, expanding on them. One says next right thing. Next right thing. When you have a lot going on, if you can just focus on what is the next right thing for me to do, it really helps. Um, This says tell her you love her each day. That is geared towards not my little dog that I'm looking at over there, Lucy. That is geared directly towards my wife, Sarah. Tell her you love her each day. That's a reminder to you gentlemen or ladies who are listening to this. Um, Brick by brick, one day at a time, micro speed, macro patience. When we are building a business, we need to just have that mindset of brick by brick. Just take one day at a time, continue to improve. And this is a Gary V phrase, this micro speed, macro patience. Be fast in the day in and day out. Work hard. Keep, keep working really hard in the, in the micro, in the day by day, but in the macro, in the quarter by quarter, in the year by year, frankly, in the decade by decade, be patient. It takes a, it takes a lot of time and effort to build a successful business. And I think a lot of times we think, Hey, I've been doing this for six years. Why am I not making more? Why am I not blah, 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 10 years, 15 years. Keep, be patient, keep working hard, be micro fast, micro speed, macro patience. Um, focus on work that matters most today. It's a little bit of a repeat of earlier. Um, slow down, be there, um, wherever you are, be there. Um, which is a little phrase that, uh, I think it's a Jim Rohn quote, which the complete part of that says the best advice I've ever had on the topic of concentration, um, is wherever you are, be there. It's a quote that's uh, been helpful to me. Um, trust God with your time. It's something I have in here. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I'll give you a little scripture. Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I've got it memorized so that I don't even have to have it written out. And it goes like this. I said I have it memorized and now I'm stuck on it. Um, do not be anxious. There we go. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And the start of that of do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, it tells you what to do. That scripture from Paul tells you what to do with your anxiety. Um, and it's memorized by me for a reason. It's very easy for me to get anxious, to get worried, to get concerned, fill in the blank about, you know, life, business, family, et cetera. Um, And that's a reminder that I need to hear often. Other than that, there are a bunch more in here, but hopefully those are some good takeaways for you. Um, I think there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in there that you need to be considering. And maybe a takeaway for you is even just to create your own list like this. What are some of the phrases, the quotes, the scripture, the stories that remind you and help you and have them be encouraging to you and help you, whether it's focus, whether it's get perspective, um, maybe find a place to capture that because this has proven to be very helpful to me over the years to just go here and be reminded of things. It's helped my just days and weeks go better. So hopefully that was a helpful Remodelers on the Rise podcast. I usually do a little call to action at the end of this. What would be my call to action today? Um, can you leave a review on Google? I'm sorry, Google Play if you're using that, but most of you are probably listening to this on iTunes. Um, if you click on iTunes, give me a little five stars if you're loving this and write a little comment if you will. Um, at the very least, feel free to shoot me a quick email, kyle at remodelyourmarketing.com. Um, and just tell me maybe something, take away something that you enjoyed about today's podcast or recent podcast. Hope you are doing well. Keep working hard. You are doing great. Until next time, talk to you soon.